Hi you guys. How's everyone doing? I stepped out for a bit today and uh, in a way it was great to see so many people out but at the same time I was going is there going to be a third wave? <laughs> Just it doesn't hurt to be cautious. Hope you guys are safe. Hope you guys have got your first shot at least and that you're doing well. Hi Pradeep. Good to see you buddy. Okay guys, I'm doing this live because I really found this entire story so very fascinating. I've interviewed some of the top photographers of our city, of our country, um, fashion photographers to nature photographers. I recently had a live with Girish Kavale as well. Uh, but this kid just fascinates me to another level altogether. Let me just tell you what today's Insta Live is going to be about. I'm just going to pin this comment here so that anyone who joins us knows what we are talking about. That's right. Joining me as part of this live will be a 16 year old astrophotographer, someone who loves taking pictures of celestial activity of the moon, of different planets. And trust you me, he's brought out some of the most mind boggling images to life. What's up, Pratamesh? So good to see you, buddy. Hello. Hello, Hello Sriram. How are you? Great, man. Thanks so much for being part of this live session. First of all, congratulations. Congratulations on such breathtaking images of the moon. We have poetry. We have such beautiful things written about the moon. But when a picture like that comes out, it really speaks a thousand words. How did, how, I mean, I have so many questions on my mind about how that picture even came to life. But Let's greet everyone. Let's introduce everyone to, of course, the 16-year-old astrophotographer whose image of the moon went viral. Pratamesh, tell us a little bit about yourself. You're a 10th grader? Yes, I uh, completed my 10th grade uh, because the exams were cancelled. I guess I completed the 10th grade. So my name is Pratamesh Jaju. Uh, I live in Pune uh, in Maharashtra. So I'm, a, uh, I'm an amateur astronomer as well as astrophotographer. And uh, I've been a member of an organization in Pune called as Jyotirvitya Parisansa. So JVP, it is commonly known as JVP. So JVP is India's oldest association for amateur astronomers. So I've been a member there for four years and uh, now volunteer there for two or three years. So I've learned almost everything about astronomy and astrophotography from JVP. And uh, along with that, uh, the internet and YouTube. Uh, That's article. amazing, man. Fantastic. So let's let's actually get down to it. Um, the images are simply breathtaking. It's it's simply outstanding. Um, you know, as a kid, I remember going to a planetarium. The lights go off. The stars come out, and you're so very fascinated. But what was the moment for you when you felt? Wow, the sky is such a beautiful place and there are so many moments to be captured. So I've been interested in uh, uh, astronomy since I was eight years old. Like I used to watch these uh, movies and series all the time uh, related to space, like uh, astronomy, uh, like Star Trek, Star Wars. So my dad, my dad used to uh, see them. I just used to see that it's so awesome that spaceships are going through, are traveling through the space and all. So I was fascinated by that. And then when I joined uh, GVP, uh, so then it grew exponentially. There's no limit to that. And how did that exposure to GVP happen? Did you just walk in one fine day or yeah. was there a person who took you there? Actually, uh, the main office of GVP is uh, where I used to live, uh, live earlier in Sadashupet in Pune. So we didn't knew about JV back then when we were living there. But uh, when I shifted to somewhere else, then I got to know about JVP. So uh, uh, do you know Ayuka in uh, Pune? So Ayuka yeah. is Indian University Center for Astronomy and Astrophysics. So on 20th February every year, there's this uh, this National Science Day. And on National Science Day, Ayuka organizes different types of events like lectures, stargazing sessions. And during the night, uh, there's the stargazing sessions organized by JVP volunteers and some IUPA volunteers as well. So uh, I visited that uh, session and I got to learn more about uh, uh, the space. I watched planets from telescopes and I was 
uh, fascinated by that and uh, the thing was that the volunteer who was explaining to me he is a good friend of mine his name is ram so uh, he looks like jack sparrow from the pirates of the caribbean and i was like he's so cool i should visit that and i joined the uh, j i i joined jb so that's how your journey yes. into jbp began and then of course you started to get exposed to how these images are captured observing stargazing seeing different celestial activities as well so beautiful so beautiful you know when you. we see a picture of the moon or when we just see a moon or recently there was a halo around the sun as well first yes. thing i i think these days everyone has a smartphone a cell phone which boasts of a few megapixels so you take that camera and you click whatever you can find and people post it up on social media and it's usually crap it's usually really really bad images <laughs> and instagram is filled with so many such stories and things like that but when did you think that all of this can be captured beautifully uh, and with the help of the right equipment with the help of the right composition patience all of this coming into play uh, why didn't you also think of uh, did you have initial tries of taking pictures through cell phones and just uh, bad images coming through <laughs> so uh, when i just started after photography uh, there, there are these stargazing sessions where i uh, where i attend uh, when i attended that, attended them so there was this uh, uh, person who was take, uh, doing something from his dslr camera so i sat beside him and i saw that he is doing something so he is also a good friend uh, right now his name is prabhanjan and he was shooting some images of the milky way galaxy and uh, they looked so awesome from that dslr and he was just using a dslr and a tripod for that so i asked him more about that that uh, what are you doing so what is this called and uh, so like that then i went home i searched on the google that what is astrophotography and then uh, i saw that many great astrophotographers from the world that they are doing uh, such awesome work with the basic equipment so you don't need the, uh, any expect, expensive equipment right away so i got to uh, know that these uh, equipment are available to me at my astronomy club and even my uncle uh, gave me his telescope which he hadn't used for a while so i can take uh, such images as well so then uh, i asked some people in gbp that how do you do this and what is the process behind it so they taught me the basics of astrophotography and then i started started learning processing techniques different processing techniques and some uh, acquisition techniques from the internet that's amazing man uh, so none of this falls under your syllabus in school however it's just your no. interest so you want you get curious and you want to know more and more and the internet of course is um, is an un, uh, is an infinite energy of just so much of information so you can find anything and you can get connected with so many people as well uh, let's talk yeah, about this photograph of the moon that you took because it's not just okay. one photograph but it's a combination of many photographs uh yes. and when did you actually did you set out a particular day or did you know that the visibility is going to be better on this particular day how did you go about it so uh, there are different phases of the moon so like the full moon new moon then there are two half moon phases so this one was the second half moon of the month which is known as the last quarter phase so just after the full moon when the moon is decreasing to the new moon uh in the middle of that there's this half moon so i uh, i wanted to capture that uh, that particular phase for, for a while now since uh, november actually so back in november i captured a similar image but it wasn't at a greater scale so it was just uh, i guess 15000 frames or something like that but then uh, in okay so but then in uh, back in on may 3rd what i did uh, i was waiting for jupiter and uh, jupiter and saturn to rise because they were going to rise around 4 430 and I had some time to kill so i started capturing images of uh, the moon so what i did was i uh, so in similar terms i captured a panorama of the moon so i zoomed i magnified into the moon so much that i can see only a small crater uh, i can see only a small area of the moon visible to me so because of that uh, now uh, let 
let's imagine the whole image like a jigsaw puzzle and uh, these all pieces are my uh, individual videos so i didn't capture 50000 or 70000 images individually so what i did i captured different videos of the different areas of the moon surface so i magnified into a uh, into a area i took a video of it around so i got around 1500 to 2000 frames from that one video so like that i captured 37 other videos so now we have 38 videos and now those 38 videos are these uh, 38 raw unedited jigsaw pieces and now what we have to do is that we are going to uh, merge the 2000 frames from uh, from an individual video into one so that is called as image stacking in astrophotography stacking is the most important pa uh, part in astrophotography that uh, enhances your image like it removes the noise so it's more cleaner and it sharpens or en enhances the details visible in the image so i merged the 2000 frames into one and one piece of the jigsaw puzzle was ready likewise i did uh, i did the same process to the other 37 videos and now we have 38 uh, 38 images so these are also raw unedited files just tagged them i just tagged the 50000 images into 38 different images so now we are going to sharpen and enhance them a little bit and uh, once that is done uh, now what, all we have to do is the, uh, that we have to solve the jigsaw puzzle and uh, that was done in photoshop i stitched all the 38 pieces or uh, i stitched on the 38 images uh, in photoshop and uh, basic image was ready so the uh, details visible in one small piece was visible in the whole image when you zoom in uh, zoom into the image so after this uh, all i had to do was some minor adjustments like brightness con uh, contrast curves levels in photoshop and enhance the colors so you might have also seen that the uh, the image has colors in it. so we don't see the moon really colorful it's just white so uh, our eyes can't resolve those colors because uh, they're not as powerful as different cameras but different types of cameras can uh, detect those colors but mm -hmm. however we need to enhance them to uh, get more vibrant shades of the moon's colors so they are emitted by different minerals uh, present on the moon's surface and uh, for example titanium iron and a mixture of oxygen uh, emit the shades of blue and purple so that is why we are seeing the purplish shades uh, in the uh, pur purplish or blue shades in the image wow so yeah this was a summary of the whole image jeez man i mean uh, for people who saw that image and felt that oh wow it takes equip expensive equipment and some bit of luck to pull off something like this so you were at it from november or long before that itself working on uh, this process putting it not together not exactly uh, but i i was planning to shoot some uh, shoot an image like this but uh, again cloud it was cloudy for some time then i could i didn't have the access to the telescope for uh, for a while and many problems like that so Amazing. when i was capturing the whole image so uh, so i captured around 50000 images 38 different videos over the data the raw data was around 100 gbs and after this when i uh, fine tune the videos then the overall data of the moon image was around 186 uh, gigabytes of data so oh, i almost threw my laptop for that <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy man and now that the image yes, is doing oh right. so well what's that like i mean um, your classmates might uh, might have been sending you text messages your cousins relatives uh, so many accolades people talking about hey is that your son whose image and whose article has come out and things like that what's that been like so it has been really wonderful that people all over the world and in india are uh, appreciating my work and they are congratulating me for that uh, it's really happy to hear that uh, and i can't expect exp express it in words and even my parents are happy about this so uh my relatives and all are asking him that like, do you know prathamesh jaju so long relatives so and they are like he's my son or something like that and it has been how fun sweet. how sweet that's so cute and let's let's actually talk about your parents um and how much of support they render to the complete uh, process that you do and your photography at some point of time have they been 
usual parents and said, "What are you doing? Why don't you concentrate on studies?" Yeah. Um, okay. Two things for this. Uh, so my parents are extremely supportive to my hobby in astronomy and astrophotography. So like whenever whenever I'm up awake uh, during the night, my mother makes something for me to eat. She wakes up in the middle of night and makes something. Then my, even my father is extremely uh, helpful with so uh, like I'm uh, processing my image. So I need some opinions. Like he's sitting uh, by my side and so I'm asking these are the two versions. Uh, tell me which one to post or which one to finalize. So he gives his opinions. I usually take them. Then uh, then also uh, again. If I'm getting too much into this, they get mad, of course. And yeah, so they are nice. extremely supportive uh, for JEP, astronomy, and astrophotography. Right. This my Go dad uh, actually got me into astro- astronomy. Yeah. Right. So you you can't really blame you now because you're the one who got me interested in astronomy and astrophotography. So here I am. Great work, man. Once again, I think it takes a lot of patience. Uh, I mean, just yeah. I, I've had wildlife photographers on the show. Uh, that takes a certain level of patience. That takes a certain yeah. amount of discipline. Uh, astrophotography in itself is such a vast and wide field. Uh, and it takes yeah. its own level of commitment and discipline and techniques and skill. Um, it's fantastic that you're able to do all of this at such a young age. The yes. sky's so, the limit think, or beyond that? Yeah. In astrophotography, the most important thing for you is patience. Because uh, every time when you're about to shoot something, there are going to be clouds. It's going to be rainy. You, you won't have the right equipment at the time. And it's clear. So now it's actually really clear. And I'm really... Uh, I want to shoot something, but I can't. Because I don't have my telescope with me. And sometimes I don't have my camera with me. So that's all. Like It's uh, stressful, but it's okay. So all you, uh, you need patience in astrophotography. So uh, even... Like in normal daytime photography, all you are, what you do is we capture images, we edit them a little bit, and then the image is ready. But in, uh, when you are capturing the images of astronomical objects, so we have to shoot the images for days. So like we need hours and hours of data of, the, of, an, of, an particular object, of a particular object. And then once that is done, you have to pre-process them. So you have to stack them. You have to remove the pad frames. You have to... Uh, capture some other frames like dark frames, flat frames. So there are different types of frames which you have to capture to get one image. So not uh, I'm not only talking about the moon and planetary photography. So it's actually really easy. To, uh, actually, it's easier in uh, lunar and uh, planetary photography to process. But when you're capturing images of deep sky objects like galaxies and nebulae, that's uh, where uh, you have to do you have to do a lot of work. So you have to capture these images for hours and hours. And not only hours, days. So the more data you have, the more your uh, beautiful your image is going to look. Then you have to pre-process them for hours. Then you have to process them for hours. And then you have to edit them for hours. So it's a huge process, but it's really fun. I and bet, fun. man. I mean, it takes so much of patience. And after all this, um, for all you know, your relatives or are- any friend could go to photography acha karta hai hamara photo lena <laughs> like i mean a photographer okay. usually has to deal with all of that uh, but pratamesh some of the major uh, institutions across the world have shared your picture um, talk to me about the ones that made you feel really happy so um don't know which are the ones exactly so uh, i'll name one so a guy in UCLA, he's doing his PhD. Uh, so his he's studying in. Uh, so his his major is uh, lunar crater formations and mountain ages formation. So he wanted some reference images for his thesis. So he uh, so he uh, sent me a message on Reddit. So I use Reddit a lot, uh, actually, actually more than Instagram. So he sent me a message on Reddit, and then uh, one second. So, and then he said, uh, said that I need some images of yours too, so that I can use them on my thesis and my research. And that made me really, uh, really happy that 
someone uh, is going to use my image for uh, scientific purposes and he's, he's going to use it for research and that's what i plan to do uh, in future so i want to pursue my career in astrophysics and astronomy so that was really good then uh, all people all over the world wanted some uh, print of the images so that they can hang it in their house and decorate their homes so that was also really fun nice and you also me, so what i've done recently that uh, like you said relatives ask ki mera photo kicho hai and uh, so i got a dslr recently and so it was a second hand i wanted it for an experiment uh, and I, I want to mo- i want to modify it for astrophotography you have to open it then you have to remove the filter and then you have to again uh, assemble it so i bought it and my all of my relatives are like click my picture from that dslr click my picture from that dslr so uh, i i hurried it up so much that i want to do the modification kal tak the awesome you can't click right that's amazing man i mean overall i must say it's fantastic that you have been able to take all this all these images at such a young age and the exposure that you've had is so very vital and it's such a learning curve as well you've also taken pictures of different planets as well let me ask you your opinion about this uh, about aliens the world of um, space and astrophysics and just uh, overall astrophotography uh, i'm sure you're watching everything with a keen eye um, and then space exploration india is always vying on how we can be ahead from the rest of the countries to be up there in space i'll talk to you about conspiracy theories and we'll come to that but what's your point of view about aliens so i would like to believe that there there should be someone out there because it's scary that we are alone in the whole universe and we are so small we are, we are even smaller than a small speck of dust so even smaller than that we, uh, in the whole universe we are so small that we are not even recognizable so our address our cosmic address is like so, uh, so my address is like pune maharashtra in india asia earth then the solar system then the milky way galaxy and in milky way galaxy there are thousands and millions of solar system uh, different solar systems just like ours then again just like our galaxy there are thousands of galaxies so in our local so there are groups of galaxies so our group is called as the local group so there are thousands of groups like they like these then uh, there are super clusters where there are these groups of uh, galaxies then there are multiple super clusters and then there's the universe so we can see that how small we are and there are so many uh, different types of galaxies that we can't even possibly imagine uh, what can be beyond our reach and the closest star to us is four light years away so that whenever we are going to watch it through naked eyes or from earth we are going to see it four years in the past because even light the fastest knowing object to us it uh, takes four years to reach us from that distance so that's really far away from us and that could be the reason we don't know much about aliens and all because they are far beyond our reach man i mean it is it is fascinating and more than anything uh, just makes you feel so rooted and uh, gives you a perspective as to how you're just a tiny speck in such a large universe which has so much more and uh, capturing these moments i'm sure gives you immense satisfaction keep at it now let's talk about the moon landing pratamesh yes. uh, something that happened many many years ago the united states of america of course uh, talks about how they were the first to land on the moon then there are the conspiracy theories which say did it really happen if so why did it take so long for the second visit to the moon and why is it taking so long for exploration to happen furthermore into the moon what's your opinion about this so first thing is that it takes a lot of money to go there and the whole budget for the uh, for nasa was around 20 billion dollars so that's really huge and uh, so we did a lot of test sessions and moon landing is 100% real because it is real and we have proof of that 
and of course so some people even today some people think that uh, earth is flat which is absolutely not it is a sphere but uh, again there are always going to be some people who won't believe in something but that's not the truth so they might have their opinions it's up to them what to believe or what to, or not to believe but uh, from scientific point of from a scientific point of view it is correct that we actually went to the moon now uh, usa won the space race between uh, with soviet union and neil armstrong really was the first person to uh, take take a uh, to take a step on the moon right and of course isro india's efforts at space exploration as well is well in progress and we are always supporting for team india to see how this is going to go about just uh, we are now hearing talks about jeff bezos and amazon and virgin yes. x making their way now in our space race again yeah so, so i mean i'm again. sure for you it's a dream to actually go to space and take photographs yes. ever thought of absolutely. that absolutely absolutely there would be no right pollution no pollution at all and it would be just super clear that would be like a dream yes <laughs> absolutely some day i'm guessing yes. uh, keep your fingers crossed and we'll be rooting for you man and we'll be waving uh ki <laughs> prathamesh is taking our photographs uh but prathamesh uh, you did mention about what your future plans are as such but you're still in your 10th grade um study is going to happen parallelly or do you feel you're going to dive into this full on um yes uh, I, i really want to pursue my career in astronomy and astrophysics by taking the science background uh i want to do something uh in the research field uh, rather than the theoretical field i would love to uh, do something uh for i i would love to uh, search something new that hasn't been explored yet and i don't know if you ask a 8 year old what he wants to do, he he will uh, he is going to say that i want to do something good, good uh, or something uh, i want to be an astronaut like that Yes. Right. So, dude, all I can say is keep the dreams alive because you are making it a reality through these great images. And uh, my God, like I've never seen an image of the moon like that. We get to see it. However, seeing it up close and personal. When you were clicking it, did you have a hunch that this is it? This is the image I've been waiting for. Or do you still feel I can do better? i can do much better than that, better than that because now i've seen the image so many time uh, when i'm showing it to people that i can see so many flaws in it that some areas are not stitched properly and uh, i could zoom even into the into uh, the moon even more so what i did uh, that i captured the images or the videos in two focal lengths so one at uh, one was at a higher magnification and one was at a lower magnification so 1500 mm so imagine my telescope is a 1500 mm lens for once and a 3000 mm lens for twice so there is this tele converter or a barlow lens which uh, doubles the magnification of your telescope so that uh, is what i did so the main craters or the main areas on the moon i uh, zoomed into them even more at the 3000 mm focal length so i got more detailed in that area but i i, I was lazy to capture the whole moon in 3000 mm focal length because that was going to be a huge process then even a bigger 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 process than that because now the small piece of the jigsaw puzzle would be so small that uh, for comparison it would be like 2 cm by 2 cm uh, it would have been a disaster to process it so that's why i did it definitely so you feel that there is room for improvement and yes, you will absolutely. go ahead and bridge that gap as well uh, out of all the things that you like taking photographs of uh, astrophotography which is your favorite subject we see so many planets we see the stars we see the moon uh, what do you enjoy clicking so, the most firstly uh, in astrophotography i absolutely hate the moon because it's so bright i mean I, we can't see any other objects when the moon is so bright, and uh, for planets, it's, a, it's also pl- fun to take images of the uh, of different planets. Like uh, Mars, last year Mars was at its closest approach towards Earth, and it was at its opposition. So it was completely like a circle, like 
a whole planet it was not uh, in a gibbous or half space which uh, is it is usually in so i captured an image of mars last year and uh, we could see the pole of cap uh, visible in my image uh, of the mars, uh, of the uh, red planet and uh, we can also we can understand the surface of different planets like uh, saturn has its rings jupiter has uh, different weather bands then uh, jupiter and saturn have uh, more than 70 moons or uh, more than 69 moons uh, they have and we can see the bright ones like uh, for jupiter it is named uh, they are named as the four ganymedean moons uh, they are io ganymede callisto and europa so you can see them uh, when you are observing through a telescope with uh, jupiter yeah and uh, yes i maintain my telescope today only i uh, i have two telescopes so the one which i have at home is the one uh, i cleaned it today right you know all i can say is i'm so glad that you started off so early at age because you have a long way to go in terms of enough and more number of subjects to click uh, you can go on taking photographs all your life and it still won't be enough because it's just so fascinating exactly. you know um, we recently spoke about how mars and india's mission to mars and whether mars is the closest planet to earth which can be inhabited maybe um what are your thoughts i mean earth is such a unique place overall um they say one earth we need to preserve it we need to take care of it uh, when you see other planets do you feel there is hope ki hum wahan ja ke reh sakte hain yes there is always hope that we can live on mars because uh, it's just like earth but a little bit different so it will take us a lot of time to adapt it because we adapted earth for a long time now and now we are what we are and uh, to adapt on mars it would also take a lot uh, on a, lo- a lot of time and uh, so at firstly we might need to live with uh, oxygen masks and something like that even some uh, different zones where we can create some pressurized areas and we could live on mars so even uh, elon musk spacex they are they are exclusively planning to uh, make colonies on mars and that's a huge thing and we are hoping to send the first ma- man mission in 2030 2034 and we hope that it would be successful and well, we are well, going to the moon again in 2024 25 so they are the artemis missions of nasa so there would be different uh, astronauts again who will land on the moon and take some pictures there now it's absolutely uh, right that we have landed on the moon and, it, and it's not completely big uh, all i can vouch for is uh, save a ticket for prathamesh because we know <laughs> that he's going to bring back some great images uh, prathamesh let's quickly go over some question and answers we have so many friends who have joined us as part of this live guys thanks so much for your patience and thanks for hanging around uh, we see uh, people are asking for what all we have to study for astronomy would you like to answer that question quickly yes so uh, for astronomy you, uh, you need a bi- even in astronomy and astrophotography you need a basic uh, introduction of the night sky like what are the constellations so if you don't know where is the object is so you wouldn't know how to shoot it so you always uh, you always need a basic introduction of the night sky that where is the object located located can i capture it from my highly light polluted city or not with my equipment of course and uh, things like that so basic equipment of the night sky the astronomical object which you want to capture would help you get even uh, better images of that right and so, would you want to show home. us uh, a, a little bit about the process would you want to show us uh, maybe the system that you work on you did mention that you don't really have the telescope uh but yeah. is in case there's anything you want to show us feel free uh yes actually i have my laptop over here uh-huh. one second i'll get my uh, charger my laptop's battery so, my battery so, is going to go one second not a worry go for it go for it uh, we're just waiting on prathamesh to join us his battery is about to die and uh, for everyone who is joining us great to see you all um, in fact when i uh, was speaking to prathamesh about doing this instagram live prathamesh was actually saying that 
uh, you know what? I, I don't do that many Instagram lives. And I was like, let's do it then. Uh, right now would be a great opportunity to connect with him, to get to know him a little. 10th grader who's taking these exceptional photographs and for all of us to be so very proud of. Uh, greetings, by the way, to everyone from Bangalore City. My name is Sriram Sulia. Uh, and it's great to catch up with all of you as part of this Insta Live that's happening. Oh my God, there's the moon. Whoa. Nice. Uh, um... I'll, we can zoom into the image for starters and I'll show you the details. Mm -hmm. One second. Yes. So this is the moon image uh, I captured on 3rd May. So can you all wow. see the crater which in, uh, in the screen? So this crater, its diameter is 101 kilometers. So it's actually uh, the distance from Pune to Mumbai. The crater is so huge and you can get an idea how big the moon exactly is by looking at it. Wow. So that's just the crater alone is some hundreds of kilometers. Yes, the crater is, uh, is uh, 101 kilometers in diameter. Its name is the Plato crater. Then the second crater, this one is the Copernicus crater. So this is one of the largest craters uh, on the moon, sir. Uh, largest and the brightest one. Because it it gets uh, sunlight directly most of the times, and the one I'm going to show you now is the Clavius Crater. So recently we might have heard that uh, NASA found water on the moon's surface. So this is the crater. And can can you see the cursor? One second. Yes. Can you see the cursor? Uh, yeah, we can. We can see the cursor. Oh yes. yes. So this yes. is the crater. So this is one of the largest crater on the moon's surface. So its name is the Clavius Crater. And so all these craters on the moon's surface, these named craters are named after great scientists, great philosophers like uh, Copernicus, crater, uh, Copernicus Crater or the Plato Crater, like Archimedes, then many others like that. So this is where we found samples of H2O on the moon's surface. And it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. And honestly, I, I can now... Imagine your fascination and how one can actually get lost. Look at that. What, what is that? That looks like a rash on a skin. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so that's the Apennine mountain ranges on the moon's surface. So uh, just like we have Sayadri mountain ranges in Maharashtra or different mountain ranges in India uh, or on Earth. So this is the uh, this is a mountain range on the moon's surface. It's called as the Apennines mountain ranges. Jeez, man, it looks fantastic. It looks so beautiful. I... Um, now we'll see some. Now I'll show you the video I was talking about. The uh -huh. tilting process. Yes. I hope you can see the screen. Yeah, yeah, we can. So this is the incomplete jigsaw piece. Okay. Now, carefully look that I'm uh, doing something over here. And now I've removed one piece to show how I'm going to uh, join it again. That right. is done. And again, some settings over here. And then now I'm going to uh, turn on all the other pieces. That's Wow. You can see the upper piece. Now the, uh, the basic stacked file of stacked and stitched file of the moon is ready. Now I have to process it. Man, that is amazing. Now I'll show you one video of the sharpening process. This is literally magic. Just see this. Did you see it sharpened? Yeah, wow. You can see it so clearly. Yeah. So this tool is called as the IMPPG uh, software. So it's specially made for sharpening planetary and lunar images. That's mind boggling, man. I mean, thank you man. for this, Pratamesh. <laughs> this is a tour on the moon. So I, I don't know what I was doing. 
okay so um, there's uh, there are pictures of the telescope on my uh, one second on my instagram feed if you want to uh, that and there's also i've recently been, uh, completed designing and making my uh, website so it is called as prathvijaj.com because why not so you can check that website to get more details of the equipment about me uh, about jvp and uh, you can contact uh, me on my mail because i haven't been answering uh, many of the dms because there are many of them and uh, you can contact me via mail via mail or anyhow you like wow man thank you for taking us to the moon and back um it's just overall astronomy just the, the the sky has found a brand new respect and and i think the moon is extremely happy that it's got the best profile picture that it could get because of you <laughs> good one prathamesh yes, i was reading uh, some comments uh, right now and uh, there's actually my friend said that i can't remember what he said 15 minutes ago and now he's saying that he will remember craters of the moon today. <laughs> because that's why because i don't pay attention to what you say <laughs> right. but everyone thank you once again for joining us and prathamesh just keep up the good job buddy um thank you honestly thank i i'm not feeling the sky is not the limit anymore the sky is not the limit we are going above and beyond the necessary norms and we are exploring to such a large extent the future is in great hands i feel and uh, just just keep doing uh, what you do which you love so very much because it is giving us a whole new perspective to the sky to uh, things that are beyond us but it looks so very beautiful so thanks once again uh, the comment game has uh, its 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 own feed it has its own life so together about a question uh, related to light pollution of the city so uh, when you are capturing images of planets and moon so they are actually really bright and uh, the light pollution doesn't matter as much as long as as you are processing it right so that's not a big problem for planets and uh, and the moon but when you are capturing of the objects like deep sky uh, deep sky objects like galaxies nebulae and uh, other objects like that uh, you you have to tra- travel to a better location so that there would be no light pollution there would be no type of pollution like no not necessary no but uh, a little less than what you have in your cities so like uh, you are living in bangalore i'm living in pune so these are highly light polluted cities and you can't see anything from your other than some small stars so last last year i visited uh, the himalayan mountain ranges with my father in spiti valley so it was so clear that uh, in my city in pune i have to find for these white patches or or stars but there you have to find for dark patches where there are no stars so that uh, light pollution matters a lot for uh, objects like galaxies nebulae and some, uh, some similar objects like that or if you want to avoid this you need other equipment like filters which block the light pollution which pass only a selective wavelength so that uh, it would block it would actually block the light pollution and would only pass let's say hydrogen so it would only pass the wavelength of hydrogen so your camera is going to capture only hydrogen now uh, just like that there are filters for oxygen sulfur then uh, other others like that right but they are no. expensive so the most uh, the smart way would be that travel and nice you know um we have so many questions that are coming in as well there's one such comment which says i want to watch this entire conversation again guys it's up on my feed and of course i'm going to share the link with prathamesh uh, he's going to share it so that you can watch his journey of how he began his fascination and curiosity for the sky and how it's transpired to him being a great photographer and he's got plenty more to do as well um Pratamesh I'm so very happy that you went yeah. to Spiti Valley man uh, I'm I'm sure you have a few places that you definitely want to visit maybe the northern lights um do you have yes. places where you want to go Yes so the first one on my list is Mauna Kea in Hawaii so the there are, so it's a volcano basically and there's no light pollution at all and on top of that mountain uh, on top of that volcano uh, 
there are observatories set up. So one of the biggest telescopes on Earth, uh, like the Subaru telescope, which is eight meters in diameter, and it's really huge. It's one of it's one of and also TMT. So the, we are building a thirty meter telescope. So not we, but uh, organization like Ayuka and different organization that are planning on building this. Uh, largest telescope uh, observable from uh, largest telescope on the earth and that's going to be the 30 meter telescope and uh, it would be really awesome and there would be no light pollution there and imagine no light pollution you are on literally on a volcano and you have your telescope with you uh, that would be awesome and if not that uh, the himalayan mountain ranges are really beautiful uh, we can get some awesome uh, foreground like the the snow mountains in our foreground and milky way in the background that would be also beautiful to watch so everyone i'd like to uh, say that you have to visit the himalayan mountain ranges once and so visit it but stay awake in the night so that you can see the beauty of the night sky well um, let's hope for the best images coming from there as well thanks so much you. for your time and i look forward to catching up with you soon whenever you visit bangalore you always have a home uh, thank you once again thank you very much. take care of yourself until next time buddy all the very best thank you.